Adam, Amita, Aira, Fakrullah, Irshad, Aiman, Nervindip, Aina, Ad, Adnin, Nurin, uh, ada Alia, ada Dania, ada Alisha, Rashdan, Sofia dan juga Umi Najiha. Okey, sikit sangat ni. Baru ada 18 orang ya. Hmm, sekejap ya, saya tulis dekat WhatsApp sikit. Okey, so sebelum kita mula, saya ingin mengucapkan berbanyak-banyak terima kasih kepada semua yang telah membuat uh, peer assessmentnya. I would like to thank all of you who have completed the peer assessment form for uh, all of the videos that we haven't um, we haven't viewed last Friday. So I will uh, summarize uh, the findings of your peer assessment and present it. Uh, I think our next class is on Wednesday. So I, I will present the findings uh, on, yes, on Wednesday, on Thursday. Is it Friday? Hari ni, our next class is on Wednesday kan? Sekejap ya. Yeah? I forgot. Hmm. Okay, wait a minute. Ada dua orang nak masuk, tak dapat masuk ni. Ya. Yeah. Right, let's see. Okay, ah yes, on uh, Wednesday. So, I will summarize the findings of all the peer assessment that we did last Friday and... Uh, subsequent peer assessment that you did as your homework before this I will present it on Wednesday so for today we are going to continue with 2.4 adaptations in respiratory system on Wednesday I will pre present the uh, findings of peer assessment including a discussion about uh, um, diseases related to uh, respiratory systems. So we already have 21 in here, but in the PADEC, there is only 14 students. So ada lebih kurang 7 orang belum masuk lagi dalam PADEC. Ya. So I will give you the link here. Uh, maybe you cannot access your WhatsApp or Telegram for whatever reason. So the link is here. So for those of you who haven't join the PADEC session, please do so because it will be part of your, uh, it will become your notes. So you, do, you don't need to write notes for the chapters that we have PADEC notes, okay? Tak perlu tulis nota, ya? Yeah? Okay, so let's start. Um, before this, uh, before we, we did an activity about producing a video regarding uh, the effects of different substances on our respiratory system. We have discussed about um, different adaptations of our respiratory systems that enables an efficient gases exchange. We have identified that in our respiratory system, the three characteristics the three main features of our respiratory system, especially in alveolus, is uh, it is moist, thin, and also large surface area, kan? So, macam Nurin tulis kat sini, okay, Nurin pun ada jawab. Nurin dia jawab, dia kata, uh, alveolus is the structure in human respiratory system that has moist surface, uh, it is very thin because it is only one cell thick and it is also has a large surface area because alveolus, we have millions of alveolus inside our uh, lungs. Today we are going to discuss about different adaptations in the respiratory systems of different organisms and we will conclude with gases exchange in plants. So when we take a look at different organisms after this, we can see that these three features can also be found in different organisms. When we discuss about frogs, fish after this, uh, we will find 
what is the structure that is moist, which structure that provides uh, thin feature and which structure that provide large surface area feature. So, thank you so much for all of your responses. Memang the semua feature ni kita jumpa dalam alveolus. So, thank you so much for your responses here. Thank you. Okay. So, I would like to move on to the next uh, organism which is frogs. Yes, sorry. Saya terpaksa cut dan saya pergi ke um, frog. Okay, so yang ni answer dia ialah alveolus. Okay. Simple saja. Kita jumpa dekat alveolus. Thank you. Alright, let's take a look at this one. So, uh, frogs, okay, frogs, uh, the pathway of gases exchange in frogs started with uh, started from nostril and the air enters the oral cavity, go through glottis and straight into the lungs. However, uh, frogs also has another organs, uh, another organ involved in gases exchange, which is the skin. So, can you identify? The characteristics of frog skin. What is the function of the mentioned characteristic? For example, moist. Moist saya dah buat, tak payah tulis moist sebab dalam slide ni saya dah tulis moist. Okay, kena cari characteristic lain. Find another characteristic. Okay, for example, the first one, a frog's skin is always moist. The moisture enables gases to dissolve in the moisture then diffuse into the skin. Beside the moist feature, what are other features or other characteristics of a frog skin and what is the specific function for that particular feature? Okay, specific function for that particular feature so that uh, find apa? Uh, towards the end, gas exchange can be conducted efficiently. Right. Okay, let's see your answer. Okay. So, uh, when we compare, yes, very good, Aira. When we compare our skin with a frog skin, we can see that a frog skin is very thin and permeable to gases. Our skin is thick and is not permeable to gases. So, we cannot conduct respiration or gas exchange on the surface of our skin. But frogs, the, their skin is very thin. Number one, it is not just skin. Uh, it is not just very thin. It is also permeable to gases. Kena ada dua kombinasi ni ya. Because of these two features, gaseous exchange can be conducted at a faster rate at the skin. Kan? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, frog skin thin and permeable is the characteristic and Okay, this is the characteristic. Very good. But the function for very thin is... Okay. Okay. Uh, boleh? Uh, this one also can. Gases exchange to be more efficient and effective. Boleh? Okay, efficient and effective. Atau higher, faster rate of gases exchange. Okay, cuba kita bagi function tu... Uh, in terms of that can be measured, kan? Faster rate. Uh, faster rate we can measure using time, kan? Okay, faster rate of um, gas exchange. Okay, that is number one. Number two, what are the features that sh uh, that that shows uh, high total apa high total surface area for frog skin. Kat mana part yang ada total surface area tu banyak? Eh, okay. I am recording this, right? Alright. 
Okay, feature kedua dah ada. Feature ketiga, okay. Kalau kamu sebut, if you mention slimy skin, slimy skin is the moist feature of the frog skin. So, slimy skin sudah ada ya, moist. Uh, in this slide, I have provided the first feature which is moist and slimy skin is also the same as moist. So, the third the third one is very thin and we can find a lot of something underneath the uh, very thin skin. Apa dia? Okay, right underneath the very thin skin of a frog, we can find a lot of what? Ah, very good. We can find dense network of blood capillaries. Okay, very good. Betul? Setuju? Okay, what is the function of having a dense network of blood capillaries? Ha, apa, apakah kelebihannya mempunyai dense network of blood capillaries? Okay, inside the padded right now, I only have 20 students. However, uh, however, in our Google Meet right now, we only have 24 people. If you have, um, if you have problems accessing the PEDEC, please let me know so that I can provide you with a link, with another link later so that you can have the same note, you can download the notes uh, using Google Slide. Dia akan jadi Google Slide punya notes lah, bukan Google Docs punya note lah. Okay, if you having trouble accessing the notes. Oh, hmm, good question. Uh, okay, someone asked me, teacher, why are there more people in this class than in history class? Uh, kejap ya, ini semua orang memang tiga solaris kan? Kan ada tiga lunar dah ni? Tak ada. Kejap, Sofia. Sama betul lah ni, watak-watak biasa ni. Soalnya, oh, se bagus soalan tu tapi saya tak boleh nak jawab sebab the names I found here is are the names of this the people in this class kan hmm. okay good uh, okay sudah ada sudah ada jawapan kat sini okay dense network capillary black of black capillary to increase diffusion rate of cases between the skins and the black capillary very good um dekat mana kita nak tulis uh, characteristic yang total surface area tu uh, because of the use of skin Sebab skin tu meliputi seluruh uh, frog kan. So, because the the use of skin for gas exchange enable to, apa, will provide to, large total surface area for gas exchange. Number one. Number two, dense network of blood capillary, capillary also provide a large to, total surface area for gas exchange between the uh, black capillary and also the skin. So total surface area, high total surface area can be achieved through two feet, uh, two structures. Number one, because frogs uses skin, so the total surface area for exchange of gases between the skin and the, uh, between the frog and the environment is very high. Number two, dense network blood, dense, dense network of black capillary also provide the feature high total surface area for exchange of gases between skin and the blood capillary. Okay, so kita ada tiga feature pada kata we have identified moist skin. Moist tu ada pada skin, large surface area juga ada pada skin and then uh, very thin. The skin is also very thin. Okay, so tiga. Now, thank you. I will... Okay, uh, so some of, uh, apa, I will uh, uh, screenshot some of the sample answers so that it can be your guide 
to um when you check out your notes later it will be your guide so this one and then another one here let me see um this network of black capillary sudah okay and then uh this one uh, very thin pun sudah. Alright, thank you so much. I have two sample answers here. So you can take a look, when you can check it out later. Okay. Uh, the sample answer I already provided in our Telegram group. Yeah, later you can check it out. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, fish gills. What is the function of the mention characteristic? Where can we find moist feature of the gills where can we find large total surface area and where can we find the feature very thin in the gills okay what are the characteristics macam mana gills achieve large total surface area macam mana gills achieve the feature moist macam mana gills uh, achieve the feature very thin. Uh, okay. Okay, very good idea daripada uh, Aira ni. Okay, Aira mentioned that the gills are made up of very fine filaments and inside the filaments there are many thin and flat projections known as lamella. So, the combination of fine filament and flat projections of lamella provide large surface area for gaseous exchange. So, ini jawapan daripada Aira, ya. Okay, idea Aira, Aira ni bagus. Okay, saya kan, uh, saya screenshot. Okay, so that is characteristic one, uh, one and two, sorry. That is characteristic one and two sebab Fine filaments to shows that is the feature uh, of a gills, a uh, feature of gills that uh, they are thin, and then uh, many flat projections. Number two, many flat projection to is the feature large surface area. Okay, and then let's see here in terms of moist. Macam mana? Uh, macam mana gills achieve moist tu? Okay, macam mana gills achieve moist? Okay. Uh, moist, ya. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. Here is another sample answer. Uh, dia kata, uh, Aida Rashdan kata uh, fish ni memang dah duduk dalam air. Fish ni already lives in the water. So, the gills are surrounded by water that provides a moist environment for the gills that increase the rate of gaseous exchange. So, we already have two sample answers here inside the telegram. Sekejap ya. Two sample answer inside the telegram that shows, okay, that shows the three features of gills. Number one, are very thin and total, a large total surface area can be found in the filament structure because filament is very thin and inside the filament there are many flat projections. Uh, known as lamella. So, the combination of the two increase the total surface area. Number uh, two features. Feature number three, since the fishes live in uh, in a watery environment, in water, so the environment surrounding the gills 
provide moisture for gases exchange in the gears. Oh, sorry, saya lock pula. So, I give you one more minute to update your answer. There are two uh, sample answers here. As I go through, kalau ada yang uh, ada yang macam tersilap, tersilap konsep ke apa, saya akan, I will give you personal feedback, ya. Yeah? So, I'm checking your answers right now. Okay, and then... Okay. Ha, ada yang uh, oh. ada yang uh, elaborate in terms of the function of water to support the folds of filaments. Okay. So uh, memang mm, nak kata apa ya? Memang kalau uh, memang kalau gills Okay, gills ni dia boleh dia boleh kembang it can conduct its function because inside the water the filaments the fine brushes of filaments are kept separated from each other inside the water so gases exchange can occur between the uh, filaments when the fishes are on terrestrial environment when the fishes ada dekat atas daratan berus-berus uh, filamen ni the fine brushes of filament will attach to each other akan uh, melekat antara satu sama lain so there is no support kan no support from water so when there's no support from water there is less exchange of gases so eventually the fishes die because lack of oxygen kan dia bila basically bila uh, ikan ni naik atas darat dia mati lemas lah sebab no apa less exchange of gases can occur because less filament are uh, exposed for gases exchange. Okay, next part, insects. So, for the insects, the, instead of having a pair of nostril macam kita atau a pair of nostril like uh, frogs, the insects have many quote-unquote nostril. Dia ada banyak hidung. So, hidung, the hidung of insect as, such as grasshopper are called spiracles and the spiracles can be found on the abdomen of uh, grasshopper. On the abdomen of the grasshopper, there are many spiracles that can be found here and it is controlled by a pair of valve. Okay, uh, good. So, uh, um, when air enters the spiracles, it will go through a structure called trachea and the trachea branches out to form tracheoles. So, based on your understanding, which part from spiracle trachea to tracheole, which part of the grasshopper's respiratory system that uh, have the three features, thin, moist dengan large surface area kan. Daripada spiracle trachea dengan tracheal tu yang mana yang ada uh, characteristic thin, characteristic large surface area and characteristic moist. So sambil kamu tulis tu, uh, we can we can take we can take a look at the diagram. So air enters the spiracle and the opening and closing of spiracles are controlled by a, a pair of valve which allow air to leave or enter the grasshopper's body. And then um, what is not shown in the diagram here is in some big species of insects, 
the trachea has another structure called air sac. So the air sac increase the movement of uh, air in and out of the trachea. Ada satu structure nama dia air sac, gelembung udara. Uh, fungsi dia macam uh, pump, uh, macam pump jugalah untuk Bila air sac tu contract, when the air sac contracts, the air movement inside the trachea, whether in into the body or out of the body, will become faster. It is very useful for big insects. Uh, sebab certain 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 species of grasshopper is very big, so they require air sacs. And then another thing is when we talk about gases exchange uh, in insects. The exchange occurs directly from tracheal to the muscle cell. Daripada tracheal terus pergi ke tisu. We don't talk about exchange between um, tracheal and blood capillary. We don't talk about blood here because insects does not use blood to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. When the muscles conduct cellular respiration when the muscle produce carbon dioxide carbon dioxide masuk dalam trachea into the trachea out of the body when the oxygen enters the spiracle spiracle enters the trachea into the trachea trachea pass the oxygen direct to the muscle cell we don't talk about exchange of gases in, uh, using blood here uh, tak guna blood pun sekarang okay all right so very good. We have several responses here. Okay, for example, this is Salma's idea. Salma said, tracheals have thin and moist wall to increase efficiency of gases exchange. Okay, very good. Okay, so ini idea yang pertama. And then uh, let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at the second uh, second feature which is large number uh, okay from amita large number of tracheals provide large surface area to facilitate gas exchange through diffusion directly into the cell okay very good amita okay we have uh, apa we have a second feature here from amita and then nanti nanti saya share uh, saya share dalam telegram ya saya tengah screenshot satu-satu alright and then the last one large number and then moist kat mana kita nak dapat moist ah okay mm, moist moist oh so most of you pro, uh, provide the moist feature tu dekat ni ya Dekat thin ya. Okey lah, okey lah. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Thin and moist wall and large number of tracheals. Boleh? Tak ada masalah. Very good. Okay. So, we have uh, we have complete features and explanation here as provided by Salma, Amita, uh, uh, ah, another one here from Awani pun betul juga. Okay, Awani punya pun betul juga. Okay, and then Aira dia bagi cadangan kat sini. Uh, and Aira bagi cadangan tambahan the function of SX. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, I give you one more minute to update your answer. Okay, as we can see here, uh, in the insect respiratory system, the tracheal have all the three features they are similar to our alveolus the tracheal is moist the tracheal is very thin and also there are a large number of tracheal for exchange of gases directly from tracheal to the muscle cell very good nanti bila belajar bio kita akan belajar pasal Apa tak kita tak bincang blood capillary kat sini? Uh, the blood cap uh, in insect system there is a separation between respiratory system and the circulatory system. Sistem peredaran dia special sikit. Sistem peredaran dalam insect does not transport gases. Ha. 
Okay, nanti bio nanti kita belajar ya. Okay, I give you another 30 seconds. Sikit lagi nak type. Another 30 seconds and we will go to uh, plants. We will discuss plants, okay. No worries here. Yeah? I will. Uh, I have uh, provided the screenshot of sample answers, but most of you have got the first two the the first uh, two features correctly, which is thin and moist. And uh, uh, thin and moist. Most of you have provided the first two features, thin and moist, correctly, and the large number also. Uh, the additional feature, which is the presence of asset, is also. Mm, is also relevant in discussing about adaptation in respiratory system of insect because it increase the rate atau the movement of air in and out of the uh, grasshopper's body. Okay, so I have to end, I have to cut short this part. Saya nampak ada yang tengah menaik lagi, saya minta maaf. I have to move to the next one. Okay, before we discuss about gases exchange in gaseous exchange in plants, I would like to gauge how much you know about photosynthesis. Okay, how much you know about photosynthesis from what you have learned from apa, primary school until now? What you remember or what do you know about photosynthesis? Boleh terus terus kat sini? Okay, let me show you the response. What are the substances used for example? Where does it occur for example? Very good. Photosynthesis occurs in the plants. Yes. Okay. Uh, taking in carbon dioxide and giving out oxygen. Very good. Okay. Ha, ni semua saya sekejap ya. Okay. Saya, kenapa saya bagi, perlu ke saya bagi right? Boleh lah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Producing your own food and okay, okay, plants your own food pula. Producing their own food, okay. Okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, green, occurs in green plants, okay, green plants. Okay, plants create their own food and takes place in the chloroplast. Uh, uses sunlight, carbon dioxide and water to produce their own food. Uh, uses chlorophyll and then uh, the product is oxygen and glucose. Produces their own food. Uses Used by plants. Hmm, bagus. Okay, so most of you have the general idea already. Photosynthesis is a process that occurs in plants because they have... Um, they have chloroplast, they use carbon dioxide and water to produce glucose and oxygen. Okay, bagus. You have the general idea already. Okay, yeah. so um, even though, even though the plants conducted photosynthesis, we can see here the different rate of gaseous exchange uh, that occurs in plant are influenced by the presence of light. For example, let's take a look at this diagram. So during the day, most of the, uh, during the day, plant takes more carbon dioxide than oxygen during the day. 
uh, even though we talk about photosynthesis in plants, please bear in mind photosynthesis and respiration occurs together in plants. It doesn't mean that during the day, plants does not conduct respiration. No, 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 no. But what occurs is during the day when we when there is a presence of light, photosynthesis, the rate of photosynthesis in plant is higher than the rate of respiration. Dia buat photosynthesis lagi banyak daripada bernafas biasa. Jadi, we can see that uh, during the day, the plants take up more carbon dioxide from the environment compared to oxygen. So, oxygen is the byproduct of photosynthesis. So, we can see that instead of taking in oxygen, the, the plants take in, takes in oxygen, eh, takes in carbon dioxide and uh, take apa, and produces oxygen. Okay, so carbon dioxide is also uh, gases that uh, produced by plants during the day. However, we can see later when we learn more about photosynthesis, there are times that there will be no carbon dioxide produced by the plants during the day because all of the carbon dioxide is used for photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis tu banyak kadar dia tinggi sangat sampai semua carbon dioksida yang dihasilkan semasa respirasi uh, digunakan untuk uh, apa digunakan dalam plant tu tak sempat pun keluar kepada environment. But during the night there is no presence of sunlight so there is no photosynthesis. During night only Oxygen enters the plant and the cells of the plants conduct, food, conduct respiration which produces carbon dioxide, same as us. So, before we discuss gases exchange in, um, in plants more after this, can you please take a look at your textbook, page 68, okay, to identify Based on your reading, can you identify the effects of different concentration of carbon dioxide on diffusion of carbon dioxide between air space and mesophyll cells and diffusion of carbon dioxide between air space and the environment? Gelap pula tulisan saya kat situ ya. Identify the effects of different concentration of carbon dioxide on diffusion of CO2 between air space and mesophyll cell and diffusion of CO2 between air space and the environment. Uh, untuk mereka yang tak ada page tu, sekejap ya, saya cuba screenshot and share dalam telegram. Okay, untuk mereka yang tak ada in, uh, page 68 kan? Okay, page 68. Okay, let me do the screenshot first. So that those of you who don't have the textbook, I wonder why you still don't have textbook but it's okay. Okay, this is the page ya. Eh? So muka surat tu saya ada bagi dalam telegram. So you can see from that page, can you identify what is the effect of different concentration of carbon dioxide uh, between air, space and mesophyll cell towards diffusion of carbon dioxide between air, space and environment towards diffusion of air, space, uh, carbon dioxide between air, space and environment.
Okay, very good. I can see here different responses for you regarding. Okay, untuk mereka yang apa still confused, it's okay because we will discuss it after this. Uh, I want you to summarize what you have read on page 68. That is the point of this particular slide. So, we can see that uh, when the carbon dioxide concentration lowers in the mesophyll cells, carbon dioxide will diffuse from airspace between cells to the mesophyll cell. Uh, and then when the concentration of carbon dioxide in airspace between cells decreases, we can see that um, the carbon dioxide in the surrounding environment atau the carbon dioxide in the air out, outside the stomata, outside the stoma will diffuse into the airspace between the cells. So from your reading, you have identified um, several structures such as palisade mesophyll cell, uh, xylem, flower, spongy mesophyll cell, airspace between cell, lower epidermis, uh, stomata, estomata pula stoma and also gut cells. Okay, thank you so much for all your responses. I can see that most of you have understand and can also apply what we have uh, discussed during uh, exchange of gases in the uh, alveolus, which is when the concentration uh, is low, gas will diffuse from structure that has high concentration to the structure that has low concentration. Very good. So sorry, saya nak, saya, I have to cut short your answering session. Okay, terima kasih for your answer. Sofia, Amita, Rajdan, Putri, uh, Putri Dania ya ni. Uh, Putri Dania, terima kasih. Saya terpaksa cut short. Ya Umi. Okay, saya nak pergi ke slide seterusnya. Kita akan discuss benda yang sama in the next slide. Okay, for, so based on what you have read, can you identify which cells that conduct photosynthesis and what is the structure where gases move in and out of the leaf? Just drag the icons to the um, cells or structure that fit the description on the left. On the left, can you identify, uh, the description is cells that conduct photosynthesis. So carry your taco, your red taco to the cells that conduct photosynthesis. Drag your taco to the cells. Uh, and then the purple, the purple description is for which structure uh, is involved with the movement of gases in and out of the leaf. Uh, gas keluar masuk daun dekat mana? Itu warna purple. Sel yang buat fotosintesis yang mana? Bawa ikon uh, merah tu. Bawa ikon merah tu dekat sel tersebut. Okey, ramai taku dia dekat tepi ni. Uh, taku Salma, Adenin, Ishad, uh, Amita, taku dia tidak berada dekat sel lagi. Sel mana tu? Okey, Nervindik pun belum lagi. Okey, Aina punya position tu betul. Umi betul. Ishad pun dah betul. Okey. Uh, don't you know worry, Salma punya position dah betul. Amita belum lagi, sikit lagi. Okay, okay dah betul. Durah pun dah betul. Okay, Amita punya purple belum lagi. Adenin pun belum lagi. Baradar pun belum. Ha, Nuri, your purple icon. Dekat mana nak bawa magnifying glass tu? Okay, ha, Putri Dania pun sama. Dia punya magnifying glass belum lagi pergi ke structure. Ha, Nurin, ha, Nurin punya taco pun belum bergerak lagi. Okay, Baradar. Okay, Baradar, is that your final answer? Untuk red taco? Not okay. teacher, not teacher. Okay, tengah gerak. Okay, okay, very good. Boleh gerak. 
Okay, let's see here. Now, most of you got the purple icon correctly. I uh, like uh, what I've presented in the Google Meet. So, uh, the structure where gases move in and out of the cell is the structure stoma uh, surrounded by gut cell. Kiri kanan dia tu ada gut cell. Okay, very good. And then you can place what uh, your red taco on whatever cells that you want. As long as the cell have the green uh, green dots inside it. Kan ke ada sel-sel yang ada green dots tu kan? So, the green dots represents chloroplast. So, as long as the cells have the green dots, uh, regardless of types of cell, whether it is a palisite mesophyll cell or spongy mesophyll cell, uh, those cells can conduct photosynthesis. Okay, kalau sel tu tak ada green dark green dot dalam tu uh, tak boleh buat photosynthesis lah. For example, uh, cells in the upper epidermis, cells in the lower epidermis kan? So, those two cells does not have the green dots. So, they don't have, uh, they don't have the ability to conduct photosynthesis since they don't have the green, dark green dots representing chloroplast. Okay, very good. So, this is the mechanism. This is the mechanism. So, on this slide, sekejap ya, on this slide, okay, untuk drawing function ni, it is for me ya, because I want to show you, I want to show you the movement. So, I will show my screen right now. I will draw on my screen right now. Okay, so the first part, carbon dioxide used, meso, used by mesophyll cell to conduct photosynthesis. Jadi, inside the leaf, this is a cross-section of the leaf. Inside the leaf, the palisade mesophyll, okay, sekejap ya, saya hanya tunjuk saya punya slide. Okay, the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll have the ability to conduct photosynthesis. So, CO2 will go to these cells. Okay, CO2 will go to these cells. Why? Because CO2 concentration in the cells is lower compared to air spaces. Therefore, CO2 diffuse from air space between the cells to the mesophyll cell. So, saya ulang balik. Okay. Palisat mesophyll cell and spongy mesophyll cell are mesophyll cells that conduct photosynthesis. Therefore, carbon dioxide inside the cells will be used to conduct photosynthesis. We can see that because of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide concentration is lower in the cell compared to the air spaces between the cells. Therefore, carbon dioxide will diffuse from the air space to the cells. Okay, carbon dioxide pun masuk ke dalam semua sel-sel yang boleh buat photosynthesis tadi termasuklah gut cell. Okay. And then, okay, and then step number four, sekarang ni air space pula kekurangan carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide concentration is lower in the air space compared to the outside, to the air outside the stoma atau compared to the atmosphere or surrounding environment. Therefore, carbon dioxide will diffuse from the environment to the air space between the cells. To the air space between the cell. Itu dia punya step untuk carbon dioxide exchange in uh, inside the leaf. Okay. Um, so, uh, when we talk about when we talk about uh, the movement of gases, first 
we have to state the concentration and then then we go and, and then we explain then we state the diffusion of gases goes from where to where sama juga dekat sini we state the difference in concentration then we will state the diffusion of gases occurs from where to where macam tu ya so there are two levels here from a space to the to the cells from air space to the cells and another level is from the environment into the air space okay so up until now do you have any questions regarding gases exchange that occurs inside the leaf ada apa-apa nak tanya tak Teacher, maksudnya kau, uh, dia punya gas tu akan continuously masuk lah. Fill the gaps uh, as space tu kan, teacher. Maksudnya Betul. Maksudnya apabila dia digunakan oleh sel, dan mm -hmm. carbon dioxide akan masuk untuk mm -hmm. fill the cell continuously. Sebab dia yes. akan digunakan. Yes. Right, yes. Oh, yes. Uh. So, as long as uh, photosynthesis occur, this process will, con uh, will uh, occur continuously. But when there is no presence of light, when there is no presence of light, Uh, carbon dioxide concentration will be high dekat sini inside the cells will be high CO2 sekejap ya hmm. kawasan sini will be will have high CO2 so CO2 will diffuse to the air space will diffuse out of the stoma itu kalau uh, di, apa ini ini untuk at night lah hmm. when there is no light So, no photosynthesis. So, dia akan terbalik. CO2 very high inside the cell. CO2 diffuse into the air space. And then from the air space, CO2 will diffuse out of the cell. So, ini yang berlaku pada waktu malam. Tapi sekarang kita cerita pada waktu siang. So, during the day, CO2 concentration in the cell is very low. So, CO2 from the air space go to the cells. CO2 from the surrounding environment goes to the As space between the cells. Okay, it's already 9.55. In the next class, uh, I, I will postpone the mechanism of opening and closing of stoma because this Wednesday, I will uh, cover the uh, diseases related to respiratory system. So, um, I will provide here a reflection slide. So, what do you think about today's activities? If there is something, uh, some uh, concept or terms that you need for me to repeat, please place it under what was hard. Uh, basically, what we have covered today is uh, we have discussed about the adaptations in respiratory system of frog fish and also insect even though we discuss three different organisms we can find that all three organisms have the same three features in their respiratory system which is there are parts that uh, that have the moist feature uh, thin structure and large surface area we have also discussed about Uh, the exchange of carbon dioxide gas gas inside the leaf. Okay, with uh, in order for carbon dioxide to move throughout the leaf, there must be a difference in concentration. During the day, the cells inside the leaf can conduct photosynthesis. So, carbon dioxide concentration is very low. So, what happens after that? Gas diffuse from uh, CO2 diffuse from air space to the cells. CO2 diffuse from the environment into the stoma to the air space. So um, that is all for today. Uh, and then please, uh, please complete page. 38, 41 and 42 in your workbook. If you still don't have the workbook, it's okay. I have made screenshots of the three pages so that you may 
copy the statements or copy your answer into your notebook. Okay. So thank you so much for coming today. Um, wait, I have to screenshot our attendance for today because because uh, three of you is not in the paddock. So takut nanti uh, tak kira pula kamu punya attendance kan. Uh, sebab tiga orang ni ada dua orang dia dah private message saya internet connection dia tak berapa bagus jadi tak boleh nak masuk paddock. So it's okay. I understand. So thank you so much for coming today. Uh, if you have any questions I will be here inside the Google Meet until 10 o'clock. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you teacher. Bye. Bye. You're welcome.